originally just a stagecoach stop between St. Paul and Dubuque. It's now Minnesota's third largest city and home to one of the leading medical centers in the world. Rochester was named by its founders after Rochester, New York. By the way, there are 19 cities called Rochester in the United States, but this is the only one that has the nickname Med City. Hey, you want to meet two of my friends? Dr. Will and Dr. Charlie. Do you know their last name? Hey. I'm sure you've heard of the Mayo Clinic, and I'm sure you realize that that has nothing to do with condiments, right? Yeah. Dr. William Mayo arrived here to examine soldiers who were going into the Civil War. In 1883, there was a tornado that devastated Rochester, and it revealed just how badly Rochester needed a hospital. So, along with a group of Franciscan sisters, Dr. Mayo and his two sons, they established a hospital that put Rochester on the map. Speaking of a map, Rochester is in southeast Minnesota. It's about an hour and a half southeast of the Twin Cities and about 50 miles west of the Mississippi River. Today, residents and visitors alike come from all over the world. Population is just over 120,000 people, and out of those 120,000 people, 40,000 work for the Mayo Clinic. So when I called it Med City, now you know why. We're in front of the Plumber Building. What connection do you have with this building? I am the Carolineur of the Plumber Building. So if you look all the way at the top there, yeah. I am the person who plays the bells up in the bell tower. And do many have a job like you do? No, I, I don't know the exact number, but I want to say there are maybe seven or eight full-time gigs like this in North America. How great that you got it the, the, at your say, young age. I was 23. Oh my yeah, it was it, uh, my dream job, truly. Get ready for lots of climbing. I always tell people, take the stairs at your own pace. Oh, okay. So one more flight. I'm always bragging about getting in places people don't get into. Well, look at me here, underneath the bells of the Carillon. It's cool. So how many bells? 56. 56. The biggest one weighs 7,840 pounds. Nice. Yeah, it's huge. So the Carillon is an instrument is about 500 years old. Okay. Uh, it originated in the low countries of Europe. The Mayo brothers, they were familiar with Carillons because they've been all over Europe, but it is very touching to see just how many people love and appreciate this instrument. It's kind of ingrained in the psyche of Rochester. I have a set concert schedule, eight concerts a week, uh, then for any special events. Every concert starts off with America, My Country Tis of Thee. And that was by request of the Mayo Brothers. They both served in the Army Medical Corps, and this instrument is a war memorial, first and foremost, to those who, who served their country. So you've been here four years, and the record was how many years? Uh, let me think, 40, 48, I believe. And your goal? 50, on the dot. 50 on the dot. <laughs> yes. So play the lowest C. That's my favorite bell. Do you hear that? That very prominent minor third overtone. A bell is the only instrument that does that. Really? No idea why. Can I play chopsticks? Yeah. <laughs> Wait. They're like, what is he doing? Good job. Thank you so much. Yeah. Remember I told you there were 40,000 people who work at and for Mayo Clinic? Well, <clears throat> here's one of them. I have worked a few other places prior to working at Mayo Clinic, and this is one of the few places that actually practice what they preach wow. about putting the needs of the patients first. They go above and beyond, always have, and they strive to do that and I feel honored that I get an opportunity to work at a place like that. Mm -hmm. I do internal medicine where I see patients on an annual basis for their physicals. I essentially do what my physician colleagues do. I have a panel of patients yeah. that I see every year and try to keep them out of the hospital. Out of the hospital. In the first place, yeah. yeah. So you know how we know you as a singer? 
So, oh, so yeah. you're, a, you're, you're a singing nurse? Yeah. I was about age three. On the radio one night was Diana Ross, Upside Down, You Turn Me. Okay. So that was, that's my first. <laughs> I can hear it. <laughs> that's my very first yeah. memory of music. But when I moved here, I just picked it up again. It was yeah. like it never, ever left me. Yeah. Love what do you music. sing? I sing a little bit of everything. With my jazz band, I sing uh, jazz standards and uh, blues. Yeah. I also have a soul band where I sing Aretha Franklin and Stevie Wonder. So Sly and the Family Stone. Yeah. So, so Rochester is a great place for the arts. And yeah. I love it. These bronze doors are in front of the Plummer Building on the Mayo Clinic campus. They're 16 feet tall and they weigh 4,000 pounds each. And they're usually open to signify that the Mayo Clinic is always ready to help those in medical need. I have one question. Where can I get one of these for my condo? I love these. Who came in here when the doors opened and what's it used for now? The two buildings, the 1914 building and the, what subsequently became called the Plummer Building, were just simply called the Mayo Clinic. And um, this was called the New Mayo Clinic, just the Plummer Building. And nowadays, it's been kind of taken out of service for most patient care functions. Hmm. The historical suite is here. Should we go upstairs? Sure. People think of the Mayo brothers as identical twins, and mm -hmm. they were not identical at all. They were totally different personalities. This is Will Mayo's office, which is rather grand and you know, very stately. Will was the businessman, they called him the chief. Will was a great surgeon, Charlie was even better. Charlie's office is less than half the size and it's much more cozy looking. Notice the needle point on the wall that says there's no fun like work. So back here are uh, uniforms of the nurses. Oh, amazing. You can't have great medical care without great nursing. On the walls are the diplomas and honorary degrees and awards the Mayo brothers received. That's it's remarkable. This was all during their lifetimes, too. Minnesota's state motto is land of 10,000 lakes. Can you guess how many natural lakes are located near Rochester? Being diagnosed with breast cancer changes everything, and it happens every single day. Patients and caregivers are quickly immersed in medical issues, but it's the lack of control and feelings of helplessness that can be crushing. ABCD trains breast cancer survivors who can provide support and hope that can only come from someone who's been there. From diagnosis through treatment and beyond, all services are free and virtual. Remember when the American dream was being able to say, I made that, I built that. Wouldn't it be great if your kids and grandkids chose a career that provides that kind of pride with good pay, but without a ton of student loan debt? A four-year degree isn't the only path to success. We need talented people to make and build. Tell the young people you love that skilled work isn't a thing of the past. It's a bright future. Wisconsin's picture-perfect, historic downtown Greendale isn't just a great backdrop for photos. It's the perfect place to find unique gifts, spend time with a friend, learn about the past, and enjoy the beautiful flowers. Ask anyone who's made memories here. We'll all tell you the same thing. You just gotta see Greendale. Rochester is in Olmsted County, which is one of only four counties in the state of Minnesota that has no natural lakes. There's a river and a few reservoirs and some ponds, but no natural lakes. So why is it in Minnesota, land of 10,000 lakes? Hmm? Enter here, Subway. Yeah. They're fooling you, because if you go down there, you're not gonna get on a train. You're just gonna go shopping the subway. It's an underground network of passageways and tunnels that connect Mayo Clinic and some of the private businesses 
in Rochester and it's climate controlled and it allows people to get all through the network of the hospitals without ever coming up into the light of day. Without ever coming up to the light of day. I know, I kind of worry about the people down there sometimes. <laughs> Which is, hence, Subway. Yes. Yeah. So we are here in Peace Plaza. My dad calls this spelunking. Spelunking. Yes. <laughs> We're going, going spelunking with your daughter. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Very good. Just as a heads up, all of the subway is private okay. and all of the Skyway is actually public. Here we are. Yeah. In the busy little hub. There are a number of stores and restaurants and a hair salon, yeah. shoe store, all kinds of things. And a barber shop. And a barber Come shop. On. Some of the restaurants upstairs actually have connections oh, sure. down to the subway. So if you went up here, there's an Irish pub that's at street level. Yeah. Skyway, let's talk about that for a moment let's because do it's it. kind of remarkable what happens in this city. So the Skyway has over a mile of public pathways mm. and 27 different sections. And the idea with these is they were meant to create handicap accessible, climate control connections to our civic and commercial centers. So they're only in downtown. Yeah. And they do connect City Hall, the Civic Center, this shopping center you just walked through, the hotels, and Mayo Clinic. I think it's smart, don't you? I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. It's kind of amazing. It is kind of amazing. Yeah. Okay, I've never been in a city that has this three main streets. One above, one street level, one below street level many choices of main streets in Rochester. So if you don't want to be in the subway, don't want to be on the skyway, you want to be outside, there's great hiking all around Rochester. My favorite part of hiking at the Quarry Hill Nature Center is that they've been so respectful. I knew I was going to be wearing my blue suede shoes. Look. We're at the Nordic shop here in Rochester, a shop that's been here a while is what I hear. 1974. 1974. It was going to be a year off. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> and? It's a long year. <laughs> it's a long year. Yeah. Yeah, we've grown steadily over the years. We've been always a, a store that sell things that were from Scandinavia that were good design. So we decided that we were going to start doing mail order almost mm -hmm. day one. So we produced our own brochures and our own mailings, and today we have our own website. Have you always had Dale of Norway, though, in your shops? Oh, probably definitely by our fifth year. We started carrying the Dale of Norway brand, we and we've done that ever since. We've actually gotten to be their largest retailer. Every once in a while, I send some design ideas. You do? Yeah. Are you like, hello, it's Louise again? Yes. I've got, I've, I've got a suggestion. Uh, uh, Louise is being just a little too modest. Out of the top 10 sweaters that Dale has in its line, more than half of them are Louise's designs. I would be so less modest than you are. I'd be like, those are Very mine. Very Norwegian. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna do a little uh, walk around and do my own shopping right now for my sister Maureen, my sister Colleen, and my brother Tim. He lives in Florida. Too bad. It was made for the Olympic Games in Tokyo. I'm gonna walk out. Don't say anything to Walter or Louise, okay? <laughs> Yeah, watch Louise. Watch <laughs> And it's called Thai Pop. Why? Uh, we picked the name because it has to do with the fact that our history is a, a pop-up restaurant. Uh, we serve popular Thai food, and just that flavor really, you know, pops when you eat it. It's a perfect name then, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> First of all, you yeah. can't have a better location in downtown <laughs> Rochester. Yeah. This is kind of the, the pinnacle of downtown. We're yeah. in a historic Third Street, downtown Rochester. We're just a couple blocks from the Mayo Clinic. And yeah. so a lot of the things in here, we order directly from Thailand. It feels like you're not in Rochester. It feels like you're taking a step into Thailand when you come in here. So you're from Thailand? Yes. Is the food that you serve here the same as you could find in Thailand? Yes, that's yeah. how it keeps us so unique and people just want to come to taste the real thing here. What are we gonna make? Today we are going to make a the walleye with a green apple salad. And you can find some walleye here, can't you? Yes, it's Minnesota <laughs> walleye here. So it's, it's so we good. Have, we have to bring this out because people love walleyes. Roasted peanuts? Yeah. 
thinking about my home. Yeah, it's bring all, yeah, bring home. me back home. Oh. So, yeah. So um, I don't drink at all. So is there a problem with you making a dry meat cocoa nope, that has this no? Is my favorite thing is to make mocktails. Mocktails. So we got a lot of people that can't drink. Right. Um, a lot of people who just don't drink. Right. As well here. So yeah. And that is lime juice. Lime juice. Ooh. Sloppy there. And Wait. did you create some of these uh, menu items on the, at the bar? I you did. She, you can take credit. It's okay. <laughs> so this is our house-made chili oil. This is the final thing that touches your tongue. Get ready. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Taste the magic. Oh, completely. And let me guess what it is. I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> what do you think? It's uh, delicious and it's walleye, which is so kind of respectful of Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm. This is delicious. To the journey of Thai Pot. Yes. Thanks for Thank opening you. your doors to us. The building behind me is nicknamed Big Blue. Do you know what major international company has occupied it since 1956? Next time on John McGivern's Main Streets. There's actually two Indiana Dunes here, which confuses visitors to no end. Of course. There's the National Park and the State Park. This is the most photographed home in the world. Probably the dumbest thing financially that I've ever done in my life. <laughs> I'll let you know when you can dump. Okay. That's amazing. How many trains go through a day? We average 83 trains a day. Want to wear something that's going to support your favorite show? Shop at Main Street Store. Proceeds go to help us get next season into production. So come on, go shopping at MainStreets.tv. Big Blue at one time was the largest IBM facility in the world under one roof. In fact, IBM employees used to call it um, lovingly the uh, Big Blue Zoo. IBM is still here, but the entire complex is called the Rochester Technology Center. Rochester is a great city for live entertainment. Concerts at venues like the Forager Brewery are incredibly popular. But if you're into big entertainment, the Mayo Civic Center offers everything from theater to ballet to comedy to music year round. Experience Rochester and the Mayo Civic Center. You're president of both. Yeah, we get to combine both here in Rochester, which is kind of unique for a lot of cities. Oh, let's talk about what happens here culturally. The arts is really growing here. You have the food scene that's growing, local music that's finding its roots here. Wow, and it looks kind of brand new, is it not? This portion of the building was redone with an $84 million expansion in 2017. But now the original portion of the building was actually built by the Mayo Brothers. They opened Presentation Hall, which is still stands today. March 9th, 1939, waiting for the first event in the Mayo Civic Auditorium. Look the, at these kids. The Mayo Brothers in particular really believed in the healing power of, of art and the yeah. healing power of, of music, and that was a big commitment, sure. and still is. I mean, Mayo Clinic contributed to help make this facility better just a few years ago, and so it shows their ongoing commitment to music and to the arts in Rochester. That's not the bean. It's called No Name Sculpture. I'm going to call it Baby Bean here in Rochester. Yeah. Cafe Steam is a coffee shop. Coffee shop. When we walked in, it was like very cool. It felt like and something was happening. It just seemed very neighborhoody. Yeah. But you have outdoor spaces on both ends of your building, and the, the front and the back. Yep. So we were able to add that patio and then add a little stage as well, which allows us to incorporate some music on some of those quieter mornings. Just a community gathering space for, for people to come and enjoy uh, the love of coffee and an exchange of ideas. What makes this different than the coffee shop that I have on my block? You're not just speaking to somebody through an intercom. If you appreciate community and, and you want to get to know people um, and you really want to have a vantage point from where um, you can see a lot of things that are happening in your community, your local coffee shop's really where it's going to be. So at the end of the day, it really comes down to, well, does it taste good? <laughs> a good cup of coffee. A good cup of coffee, yeah. It's really important. <laughs> I've got that ice vanilla latte with an extra shot. I've poured anywhere from 60 to 70,000 lattes, and I still feel like it's something I'm figuring out. So yeah, it, it's just a lot of practice. Yeah. See, I would have given it up. <laughs> if you'd like, I can give you a lesson in latte art. So I, I love that. We can start to pour right at the center. Give it some big swirls all the way around. 
Wonderful. Do you know what that is? I don't want to <laughs> even try. <laughs> no. I don't know what kind of television program this is yet. <laughs> it's a peace sign. Peace sign, yes, that's what I was going to say. Remarkable. It, it, hey, who knows? If television doesn't work out for you, you could always do barista. Nobody's sing. really talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we have it. Next, who ordered this? <laughs> These are autonomous vehicles. They actually operate on a pre programmed path, they don't have a driver. Everything is automated and drive like a typical vehicle. And what a perfect city for this to be tested because visitors, yep. you, you have so many visitors that are connected to the Mayo Clinic that need something like this. You know, the city of Rochester is known for so many things. Obviously the Mayo Clinic. Yeah. There's a lot of technology innovation here as well. So we're really excited to showcase it with a number of those different partners, yeah. but also bringing in people from around the world, getting their perspectives. That's going to be pretty exciting as well. There's an operator, an attendant on board that will take over in any safety issue okay. could occur. There is someone that can override the technology. And will you ride with me? Definitely. Okay. Not too scary, right? No, no. It's great. Where is this one programmed to go? When it stops here at the People's Co-op um, on the south side of the route, and then it will also stop on the north side of the route in front of the Gonda building uh, at the Mayo Clinic. But I think this thing is really cute. <laughs> we get that a lot. Just so yeah, you know. Yeah. But so far, people just stare, right? A lot of stares, a lot of stares. <laughs> and we always joke that uh, if we're on board, part of our job is to wave. You have to wave. Yep. I think we go about max 12 miles per hour. It's almost not that exciting in some ways because it's doing such a good job. <laughs> Maybe we should take this on the road for John McGivern's Main Streets. What do you think? Every community owes a debt of gratitude to its veterans. We join the people of Rochester honoring and remembering all of those who served. Have you ever been to that place? That place where there's always something new to see? Where there's always something new to learn? That place with so much beauty that it fills you up with joy. That place that speaks your mind and your heart, where inspiration feeds your soul, and where the wonder of the natural world is always growing. Ryman Gardens at Iowa State University. This is that place. John McGivern's Main Streets would not be possible without the generous support of our sponsors for believing in our mission and committing to supporting our upper Midwest communities. Thank you so much, sponsors. The good news of Rochester and I have someone here who could help us. Hi, Mayor Kim Norton. Hi. You know there's more, a lot more, at MainStreets.tv. Because when you work with John Perfect. McGivern, you can't really fit him into half an hour. I don't know if you can find something in there. Find me on social media or go to our website. This is going to be fun. He wanted a space for a barbershop, and this had that plus. When did you get your barber license? 26 years ago. It's a shop that I've, I've dreamed about building since I've been 18 years old. I've been looking for the last 14 years for the proper location and the right setup. I, we wanted to have more than just a barber shop. Um, we've been to food halls in different parts of the U.S. and we thought what a unique and fun concept. So we thought, why not Rochester? Yeah. And here we are. You want, we wanted to have what you see. Yeah. So we finally found the building and here we mm -hmm. are. You kind of went over the top, just so you know. <laughs> it's like, we wanted a bar, we wanted a barber shop. Well, you, did, you did really well. Let's talk about this building. What was in this building? How old is this building? It was a 1930s workshop. That's why we went with the workshop, Food Hall and Bar. Um, it was part of the Reed Murdoch property across the street. It was a canning factory, mm -hmm. along with our iconic corncob water tower. They did tear down the canning factory, but we have our workshop and then the corn cup. That's our claim to fame here. Come on. Right. People, how do you get there? We'll look for the corn tower. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It goes mail, then the corn cob water tower. That's the order it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I think our biggest challenge is opening four restaurants all at once and then making sure that we're listening to the community and adjusting as we need to to make sure that we're bringing them exactly what they want. But at the end of the day, again, it goes back to the guests, right? Now make sure the food's coming out hot and delicious, the drinks are going out cold, and, and the guests are leaving happy. Please enjoy and thank you for being our guests. That's so good. <laughs> no, That's really, you guys really did it right, you know? Thank you. You did. It just got a fresh coat of paint. 
It's a fresh ear of corn. Butter, anyone? Here we are in Rochester, Minnesota, yeah. living the American dream through a dough ball. I was born in this small house in Italy. And my family came to America mm -hmm. when I was six years old. We settled in the Bronx, New York, uh -huh. and I started working in this pizza shop. How did this community happen? How did Rochester happen? So I was recruited to come here to be an executive chef. And as I was here, I realized, wow, this is missing that special uniqueness of Little Italy. Yeah. Little Italy of Rochester. Yeah. And that's where I said, I want to open up a pizza shop. We created a common table for people to pay it forward, where if you see this, it says, pay it forward to a friend or donate a meal to someone in need. And it's all about kindness, isn't it? It's kindness, it's compassion. Respect. From the respect of human beings. Yeah. Our style is New York style. Okay. It's the original Napolitana style that's thin. You can get a slice, you can get a whole pie. We have tromboli's, calzones. Mm. Oh, Maronna me, look at this beautiful calzone. We have a stuffed pie. This is the stuffed pizza. A Sicilian focaccia style pie. Yeah. Melts in your mouth, mm. Yeah. Mm. To that nostalgic feeling and taste of tomato, cheese, and bread. We're gonna make a good, beautiful pizza. Nice. Okay, ready? Yeah. <laughs> Almost, Almost baby, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> now we put the delicious imported tomatoes Yum. right on. Look at that. Then we put the mozzarella. Remember, you don't have to put a lot of cheese because right. it's the best cheese. Are you ready, John? Here we go. Look at this beauty. Look at that. Listen to the crunch. Then we put a little bit of fresh basini gold. Can you say basini gold? Basini. Say it again. Basini gold. Uh, I can't say it, I guess. That's nice. Let's show you. Give yeah. you a little trick. Okay. You blow. Uh huh. And then you take a little bite. That's heaven. It's heaven, right? That's heaven. Crunch it. Yeah. You just taste it, and you're just in love with it again. Oh crap, man. Mm. <laughs> Rochester, Minnesota's main streets speak to me. There's nowhere else I'd rather be the heart and soul of communities. All main over the Midwest. Main sounds good. Does it? Trust me, you're never going to find me there. Welcome to the Gong Show. Mm -hmm. I don't know where you got all that. <laughs> it's my natural this. I'm so sorry. It's so good. Hey. I <laughs> uh, Said they're gonna add it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's gonna make TV though. <laughs> I just can't do this anymore.